fishing has given me a job and an income and a total way of life, really. I'm lucky enough now to fish for a job. And recently, it's allowed me to move up here into like a fishing paradox. The reason I wanted to move here is because the fishing options are so diverse and there's so many amazing different fish you can target doing a whole range of different techniques. I'm Johnny Brooks, I'm from the east coast of Australia. There is hundreds of islands that um, are just offshore here. I think there's ones that are like so close to the mainland and if you fish them all properly, it would take years. It's just that ridiculous, there's so many. And for me, my fishing and my fishing career, I guess kind of was based off fishing around those islands in the early days doing the land-based stuff, targeting GTs and um, that gave me a real appreciation for how amazing the islands are. But the fishing can be very temperamental at times. It's either on or it's off. But if you fish enough and you work it out and try and get into it a bit, the fish that you can catch there are just ridiculous. When I'm doing this kind of fishing, I base my day around the tide. So what I like to do is create like a bit of a circuit that I'm gonna follow that's gonna have current hitting the front edge of a certain rock or island or headland or whatever it is on that tide. So this is our first spot today. We've got the currents gonna start coming this way on the run out tide. So we're gonna fish the front side, the current facing side. Um, the bait's obviously gonna get welled up against this island rock. You can see the bait in there. We'll see it shortly. Bait's there, the fish are there, current's hitting it. And then from here, we're gonna to move to another rock that has the same situation, just repeated, repeated, repeated. A few casts in every zone. Generally with GTs, if they're there, you're gonna know about it pretty quickly. So we're just gonna pepper our way along this edge because it's quite long. And um, if we get a fish, we get a fish. If we don't, we'll move to the next zone, fish that front side, and um, hopefully we can start getting a few. Crazy little rock, eye. Hey? For me, I really, really enjoy catching GTs, obviously, but for me, there's a bit of a difference between going to the Great Barrier Reef, where you can catch easily 10 fish in a day. The island GTs are a little bit different. They're generally bigger, they're generally a lot badder, and they smoke you, so you have to put in a lot more work. You might, you might only get one chance a day, or no chances, but Generally speaking, that chance you do get is gonna be a bigger, angrier cycle of fish. So that's what we're hoping for today. This current's just starting here and um, just plodding along, nothing major. I'm not really expecting it yet, but we've got a good chance of a GT at some stage today. Uh, bycatch, doing the same casting on the same setup. Spanish mackerel, tuna, all that kind of stuff. So. Man, it's the most exciting thing in the world. I, I actually, before I do this kind of fishing on the islands where I'm fishing heavy for a big GT, it's actually a little bit nerve wracking. I get a bit scared. Don't know if I'm actually feeling ready to do battle with one, but as soon as it eats, everything out the window, hold on. It's good. Just need to find one. Day 22. I'm just going to be rotating through two different setups. So I've got two casting rods. One is this one here, the 83150 with a popper on. And then I've got the 84100 down there with a sinking stick bait. So I'm going to pepper with the popper and then every so often I'll mix it up, sink one down, go a little bit slower with a sinking stick bait and see if that gets the bite. Once we get that first one, we'll kind of know what's gonna work if they're being fussy, which we don't want them to be fussy. Like a secondary drop off out there. 
which I would much rather hook one out there than here. Oh, on me, on me, I'll go for it. He sunk it. Woo! Wasn't a bad one. Seen the first one of the morning. No bite, but he came in pretty hot on it as I started moving the lure a bit faster, so. They're here, at least. Still hold it up in the middle, I might change. Have a little drift through with the uh, other setup. Chuck a little sinking stick bait in there. See if they will commit to the sinking stick bait. We've had a couple of little half looks. No bite yet, but we've raised a couple of fish, so they're here. Just need to make them eat it somehow. Quick change, just gonna chuck this sinking stick bait in. Surtape 14,000 and the Tobizo 84100. Just gonna work it a little bit slower, let it sink a bit, and see how we go. A bit more drag probably wouldn't hurt in here. As this current picks up, the bait's just starting to stack more and more and more. So we've got a little school of bait right in front of us. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but just looking for that little difference in the surface texture of the water, a little shimmer, and that gives away where the bait is, so. Oh, what was that? I'm nearly ready. Oh. Little bag. Come on, buddy. Very shallow. Don't you do it. Might just need to um, get on the wheel here as well in a sec. Keep just trying to get him up. Wow, that was unexpected. He's not huge, but... We are very close to those rocks. Oh my God. I had to go so tight on him to not let him get in there. And that's a start. First fish of the day. Cameraman with good skills here. <laughs> Starting the boat, filming. That was intense, man. Come on, man. He's not huge, but we'll take him for a start. Woo! 84, 100. And you can see how much heat I had to put on that fish to put the brakes on him. And the rod did not disappoint. Right, we got him. We got him. You can see he's not a monster GT by any means. They get 10 times bigger than this guy. But he really gave it to me. That was where I hooked him was probably like three meters deep. So I had to fully go to town on him to try and stop him. And we somehow managed to get him. I'm actually pretty happy it wasn't a 20 kilo model in there because it just would have destroyed us so close to the rocks. But that's the start for the day. Hooks out, he's gonna be totally fine. These guys, there's a reason why they call them the toughest fish in the ocean. You can catch them, they handle so well in the boat and he's gonna be fine. I've caught them before with old rusted out hooks in their eyeball and they're blind in one eye and they still eat your lure. So you feel his body start tensing, like he's ready to kick off. There he goes, he's coming back to us. We're on the board. It's a good start. Not a giant, but hopefully they can only get bigger. Here we have like a pretty large tidal range, which affects water quality, water color, all that kind of stuff. And it affects the fishing immensely here. So. For me, when I got here, I was just going fishing when the weather was good. And um, 
I learned pretty quickly that certain tides, certain times out on the islands are just no good for doing certain things. So it's really worth noting all that kind of stuff, just a mental note or writing it down or whatever you have to do to try and remember what time to go and target each fish. And sometimes it still doesn't work. You can be out there on the perfect tide and the perfect time, you don't catch anything. But that persistence in learning and working out what's going on and just jotting it down in your head and keep going, keep going, keep going. Eventually, it all comes together and you get them and you get them a little bit more sorted out. You never get them fully sorted out, but you get a little bit closer every time. So. Yep. We're bending. What is that? A little spano. It's green. Woo! Right now we're really close to the top of the tide, so we've got minimal flow, minimal current. Chucked a big popper on and just really, really slow. A couple of fast little twitches and he smashed it out of nowhere. So, we got him, boys. There we go. Top water Spanish mackerel on the popper. These guys around here, you can get them up to like 30, 40 kilos even. So this guy is only a small one, but at this size as a GT bycatch, they're incredible eating fish as well. You can see the size of his head compared to the size of his body. This fish is like 90% meat. So we're gonna keep this guy. They don't release very well. So we're gonna keep him, whack him on the ice, and he's gonna be dinner for a little while. Fishing started for me when I was like, I don't know, I think it was probably like three years old. My dad was always into fishing. Um, he's always been casting lures, tying his own flies and all that kind of stuff. So. I can't even remember the first time I went fishing, but I know I've got photo albums of me and me Batman undies holding flathead, so um, I think I was pretty young. Little queenies, sight casting them like this, winding as fast as you can in this setting. Doesn't get much funner. Fishing the islands, I take a bit of everything. I take popping gear, I take a light jigging rod, I take my tusky setup, I take all this stuff because I never know what I'm gonna get. But for me, the main thing I really like to do on the islands, I like to go out and I like to catch big island GTs. Or try to anyway. They don't always be big, but. Oh yeah, on me. Yep, yep. Gonna need you to reverse. Just bracing here, because it's so shallow in there. Try to swap sides. The potential out there for a really big GT is ridiculous and that's what really froths me up to keep casting at rocks and headlands and pressure points and all this kind of stuff. You get a lot of that run of the mill 15 kilo GT that comes up and eats your lure but occasionally you get a really big one that comes up and um, that's where it's at for me. It might take 10 years to get that fish that you're after or you might never get it but the potential's there and when you hook him you could really gonna know about it. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, on it, on it. Oh. Yeah, got it. Oh. Pulled him, pulled him, pulled him. Big, really big, really big, Godfrey. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You're huge, come on. Did you see that thing? No bite. Been pretty persistent with the popper. I think the fishing's been a little bit tough for whatever reason, I'm not sure, but I think when it's a little bit slower, popper's kind of good because it just annoys them, I think, more than anything. Big noise, big commotion, and it just kind of makes them angry and maybe a bit more than just having something gliding through the water like a little sticky. So leaving the popper on the on that setup, on the 83150, and I'm just changing it up from a sinking stick bait to a floater here, just to still get a little bit of commotion, but a little bit more subtle commotion. And I've left, as you can see, pretty small travels on this, because this is the one I'm gonna chuck in like more mackerel style areas. So these small travels, the 
idea with them is they're just going to stick to the mackerel's face a bit easier. So ideally we don't want to hook a really big GT on this with small hooks, but beggars can't be choosers, can they? On the, it's on the, oh, it's small, it's covered. Big fish, man. Big fish, man. <laughs> Several big fish there, man. Come on, mate. So scared of these little hooks. I knew this would happen. Coming back up. All the ingredients for a fish there, big bait, current, that was a savage pack attack man. Best one of the day. Oh yeah, he is all right. He's just an amazing depiction of, a, of an island GT. They're thick, they're dark, they're angry and they fight so hard. Look at that thing. And that's a nice little way to kind of wrap up Island GTs. Like I said at the very beginning, like Island GTs are a different beast. You, you can cast all day and not see a single thing or you can cast all day and only get one opportunity. We've been lucky today, we've had a few opportunities. Nothing really huge, but a fish like that, you just saw the fight that it gives you and he's a solid, Thick Island GT. Moving up here, I obviously knew people here that helped me out with a lot of fishing stuff and pointed me in the right direction, but going and just driving around and looking at new places and you come across the most tropical, amazing looking zones you've ever seen. And for me, one thing that really blew my mind moving up here and it was something I hadn't really done that much of was flats fishing and going into like a tiny little beach, putting the electric in and just seeing what swims past. You're in like a meter of crystal clear water in the most beautiful setting ever and a fish that's pretty big, just comes and swims up to you. It's just like, it's like they shouldn't be there, but they are. And um, everywhere I go, I see something and I just pull in and have a look. And sometimes you don't see anything and other times you're like, oh my God, this is a gold mine. I'm coming back here, so. We're very lucky either way, if I can go north or south and find cool stuff. Like if you have a look around here, we're in the most tropical, beautiful zone ever. Eyes peeled on the shallows and I'm looking for a big fluoro blue fish. Like, I don't think it gets much cooler. It actually does get a little bit cooler when you hook one and they just sizzle. Like, I think they're like the, for what they are, they're the best fighting fish I've ever come across. So, I really love doing this. But you need a lot of patience as well. And they really test your patience, which is probably another reason why they're fun to catch or try to catch. You might have it. Oh, you dog. I don't think he had it. I always think when, I'm, when I haven't seen one in a while, I just can't wait to see one. And then when I see one, and I don't catch it because he spooks or something, it does my head in. And then after you, like, it's so difficult. Everything has to be perfect to get one to eat. So it's a weird thing. I think tusky fever, which is what I'm suffering from right now, is a real thing. Because so I've been looking for them for a few days, looking at new zones, and um, my eyes start playing tricks on me. I keep seeing these little blue things, but they're not actually there. It's just me wanting to see them. So. 
It's a very addictive way of fishing, I think. I always thought the tusky thing was kind of a bit like brim fishing in a way. I thought it was just one of those things that was a bit of a fly fishing wank and I wasn't that interested in. And then I saw one and I cast the plastic and just left it there on the bottom and it went over and turned upside down and smashed it and absolutely obliterated me. I've never been smoked quite like that before. And from that one fish, now I have full blown tusky fever and it's hard for me to go fishing now without looking for one. For what they are, this little blue crazy looking fish, they're the hardest fighting fish I've come across, without doubt. Just pop my head up and I've got a tusky, I've spotted him like 50 metres out. He's just kind of milling around on the sand, I can see him right there. Big fluoro blue blob, another one just in front of him. This would be magic if we can get this one off the sand here. Like fully hunting around and getting ready to make his way up. I'm going to send a cast in. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. One of them's got it. Oh, the Moe got it, man. That was pretty cool. We just had two fish come in. There's a blue one and a silver one. They both came to it, got eaten straight away, and the wrong one ate it. Wow. I can't believe the, the luck or bad luck of that. But um, still a really cool fish and fighting really hard. Just catching anything in this zone here like this is just pretty amazing. Always oh, trying to get back out there. This is the Snipe S72XX. I use this a lot, like vibing and stuff for Barramundi here. But on the flats, chasing these things, you need a little bit of stopping power as well. There's all these scattered bombies everywhere. And you hook one of those big blue tuskies the first thing they're doing is trying to get straight into those bombies. So you need a rod with a bit of power. Look at that thing. That's a tank, man. Obviously we're out here today chasing big tuskies on the flat, but we had a tusky and this guy coming in and I will take any fish in this zone in a metre of water, crystal clear, that you can pitch a cast in front of and he comes over and smokes it and pulls like that. That thing's incredible. Look at him. The whole thing about it, again, it's so visual. And you see this fluoro blue creature just cruising along or just sitting there on a rock or something. Cast near him, he may, very rarely, he may come over to it and eat your lure. Coming, I don't know what they are. One's definitely a tusky here, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. here we go, here we go. Got three. Got him. Got three. As soon as I hit that fish, it is like, a thousand miles an hour. It's the craziest instant screaming drag you've ever heard in your life. I can't even talk. I felt him just go Doom! Here he is. Come to Brooksy. We got him. Saw this guy just chilling in like a meter of water and he's just vomited on me. That's really psycho. And of all things for him to eat, I'll give you a little look in there. It's a four and a half inch paddle tail, weedless hook. And he just charged over to it and smashed it. Didn't think twice. I keep a couple every now and then. They're very good to eat. They're just an amazing fish. They're the most beautiful looking fish I've seen. They fight like crazy and I can make good tacos with them.
That's a gentle release, man. That was cool, Lars. I can't believe that. Little paddle tail on the snipe. That's nice. Very good, very cool. I can still see him swimming away, he's just cruising. The dam is a pretty special place. It's obviously the water source for the local area and they stock this dam with barramundi, I think every year. We're very lucky to have like the average size barra in here that I've seen is probably like a metre four or something. So they're huge and there's thousands of them. So it's a pretty unique place as well, just with what the weed does here and the weed growth and we get these big flats of weed that are just like a foot or two under the water and we just cruise along and you see this giant big golden log sitting in front of you and pass in front of it and make him come and it's one of the most technical difficult ways to fish that I've ever I've ever experienced but it's so 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 fun the most minute disturbance on the water like sometimes there'll just be the tiniest little slit and it's just their tail, just like the tip of it just poking out or something. It's crazy how subtle they can be sometimes. There's one up here in this little channel in the weed. You can see his tail up there just wafting away. So we're going to come in very stealthy on him. Look at him, man. He's just wafting away up there. See, there's one wafting and this guy tailing. I've been lucky enough to fish here quite a bit and do it and now sometimes you can't do it. Sometimes you've got to work really hard to just get a bite or see a fish. But when they're on and you come out on a day when they're happening, you can kind of play with them a bit. You've seen them that much and caught them that much. You can make them chase your lure. You can make them eat it at your feet. And um, all hell breaks loose when they eat it. It's pretty cool. See, as soon as we chewed the weed, they've like kind of, they're aware now. Possibly just nuked these ones. Well, at least we're finding them. If that's a fish, he's 100% eating my lure if he keeps doing that. It's going really fast though. There's so much luck involved. You've seen this morning, we've spooked a few, and a lot of times it is purely down to just being in the perfect place at the perfect time. Like, that fish there is cruising down the weed edge and they're the ones that you want. They're the ones that are so happy to eat your lure. Because he's just moving around. You put your lure in front of him, he eats it 10 times out of 10. But you need to be there when he's cruising, so that's the luck aspect. And you just need one of them to pop up in front of you and you get him. But I'm sure we'll have our chances at some stage this morning. We're coming onto him very quick. He's literally half a metre away. You seen it? Yeah, got him. Here's a good one. Oh, yeah. Don't go near that stick. Oh, man. He's a really good one, Benny. Wow. Zero to a hundred in about half a second there. And wait a bit. Oh. His head, like he was sitting in the weed, but it was just like a little clump. And I put it on the other side of the weed and he must have just been able to see through. Jump for us. He's really, what the hell, man? He's really giving us some. Get out of the way. Oh. Spook a few, and you get one like that, and somehow he, oh, he's got us so buried in here. Come on, mate. Come on up. Oh, there we go. That's what we come for. 
Look at that. Not bad. God, he went hard. No jump, but my thumb just got fully fried. Oh, good man. What an epic fish, man. Hey, uh, look at that thing. He's proper. Look at that. He's a doozy. This is a barramundi. And in Australia, this is the number one kind of sports fish and always has been. And we get them in both the salt water, places like this in the fresh as well. And when you catch them like that, sight casting in the weed and you hook a meter plus fish like this, it doesn't really get much better. It's the best, funnest fishing in the world. Look at that fish, just incredible. And he gave us a lot of heat. He's Gone and gave himself a bit of a touch up on the on a stick that down there somewhere. Big slab. Have a go at that. Beautiful North Queensland barramundi there. That's as good as it gets. Perfect fish. What do we got here? Touch over 104. So that's a cracking fish. That's probably like the average size fish in here, but when you get them like that, where there's that thickness to them. They just go so hard. You can see that line burning off when he ate. It's such an incredible fish. Barramundi, I guess they're most, like the most iconic Australian fish. They're just like a big silver slab with massive scales and they fight hard, they jump like crazy and they're just, they're big fish, they're not small and any big fish that pulls hard is gonna really put everything to the test. You need to have a strong enough hook, you need to have heavy leader because their mouth is so raspy and it can wear through the leader. And you've got to have a rod with a bit of power that you can jam that big hook into the fish. So if you look behind us here, we've got all this timber and stuff as well. So you want to have a bit of stopping power. Yeah, you can really have a good tussle with them in the sticks. It's pretty fun. We've got a big tail up here. I think there's another one just here as well. So we're just going in super quiet. This is where we want to hook one in, in the big stick schmozzle. You've got to make that fish eat. He'll follow, but you have to trigger him to eat with a little twitch or whatever it is. And it's really fun. It's super challenging and sometimes extremely frustrating. But when it starts happening and you start getting a few, it's just amazing fishing. Really big, really big. Come on, just get your head through that weed, please. Got him, bro. Got him, bro. There we go. There we go. Come on, send it. Back here. Oh. The bite's incredible. It's the best thing about it. I'd happily just have them eat my lure and miss the hookup just for the bite. And it still scares you. We were talking about it earlier. You see one following your lure and you're whining, you're whining, you're whining, you're whining. And sometimes you can trigger him to bite, but other times they'll bite when you don't expect it and you jump and you kind of miss the hook set. And you hear them when you're just cruising around, and you hear them buffing on the surface, and it's like a gun going off there, insane. Try and keep him on a short leash here. That was cool. <laughs> Fish number two, that was just amazing. Just saw it, and he just came after it a little bit, and just didn't even think twice, ate it. And if you have a look around us, we're just so tight in all these massive dead trees, so. We'll get him up. Come on, buddy. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Not as big as the first one, but still super healthy and chunky. And they fight so hard at this size too. 
Look at that. Ooh. He's out of there. All right. Two. Next one's only going to be just a little ways up here. I can feel. Can you see the beads of sweat? The reef is like the ultimate fishing place in the world, in my opinion. The amount of different species you can catch out there and the pure amount of fish is just like nothing on the planet. And I've been, I've been lucky enough to fish all over the world and I still don't think you catch anywhere near as many fish as what you do as the, on the Great Barrier Reef. It's just insane. It's a mission to go out there and you're at the mercy of the weather. If a storm rolls in, now that we're getting into summer, um, you get those other storms and if you're staying the night out there and one of those things comes, like, it can get pretty hairy. So it's a long way out, you've got no reception, you're vulnerable out there, but it's all worth it for the fishing because it's just like nothing on earth. It's looking absolutely beautiful, really. Complete, oh, we've got like the tiniest little bit of wind, but the conditions are as good as you could ever ask for. Day of the new moon today, so I don't know, you'll be able to see at some stage, the current is absolutely hooking. I think we got, what, three hours of run left of the run in tide, and I'm actually kind of nervous. This is one of my favorite setups that I've been using now for like probably four years. It's the Tabizo 83150G. I run it just as like my PE8 setup, all my top water stuff. And um, I guess you'd call it a bit of an all-rounder. You can pop up to like 150 grams, stick bait up to like 180 or something. Right now I'm throwing just like a little 100 gram floating stick bait. I'm gonna chuck it in, make a little splash. And I reckon, we're gonna eat it pretty soon. Anticipation is like hurting my brain. Very hard to see the reef. We've come out super early, so. If it was the middle of the day, you'd see the perfect edge and you'd be able to see every bombie, every little cut in the reef. The area out there is so full on. It's like ultra shallow, ultra razor sharp reef everywhere. So you need to be able to stop fish quickly. And you can hook a big fish, a big GT in 40 meters of water or you could hook him in one meter of water. For me, I always fish pretty heavy. I fish like PA8, even on the flats. If I'm targeting like a bigger fish, you want to fish heavy to stop that big trout or a wrasse or whatever it is from getting, getting you in and smoking the living daylights out of you. So it's brutal fishing. Everything's got to be good. Everything has to be strong. Your knots have to be perfect and it comes down to just being confident in your gear. All right, so we've had two little spots we've fished so far. Again, that low light and now that the sun's coming up a bit, we can see the water's a little green in the lagoon. So making our way out, hopefully we can find a bit of cleaner water. Bait pushing up with this run on the hard edge on the outside of this reef here, so. It's fishing in the end of the day. You can have a plan, the perfect plan, and you still gotta hunt and find them and eventually we'll get them. They're just making us work a little bit this morning. She's moving. Obviously we were really excited to come out today because of these big tides, big run, lots of fish, but you just never know what you're going to get when you come 100 k's out. Um, the water could be amazing one day, it could be dirty the next, you never know. On the run out tide we could find a pocket of really good water and really good fish, so we just got to persist, 
water, food, keep casting, keep looking. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. It's not a bad fish, I don't think, boys. Where did he come from? He's gonna get me in there. We're on. It's not that. Coming up really high. Whew! A lot of casting to get this first nib of the day. He's just on top of this bomb, so I'm trying to put the brakes on him as much as I can, stop him from going over the other side. So if he gets on the other side, he's gonna drop off the edge, which is all over. It's been a little while. <laughs> Forgot what it's like. There's a little nugget. Do. Come on, buddy. Welcome aboard, mate. Oh, yeah. There we go. A little bit of a slog this morning. He's not the giant we're after by any means, but it's an epic fish. You can see how hard they fight. Even on P8, he's probably like 10 kilo or something. Smash the lure. I'm puffing. But that's the start of our day. These things are as tough as nails, so he's going to go pretty quickly, I reckon. See ya, bud. Woo! On the board. Every time I go to the reef, and I've been there a lot now, every time I go there, I have like a little moment to myself where I'm like, oh my God, how ridiculously beautiful is this joint? And I think if you go out there and you don't have that moment, you go out there too often because it is just the most beautiful thing on the planet. They can see it from space for Christ's sake. Like, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. And if you haven't had the opportunity as a fisherman, wherever you live in the world, to come here anywhere along the Great Barrier Reef and go fishing, you haven't really fished yet because it is just insane. If you fish a lot and you travel, a lot of places, like so many places in the world where you go fishing and there's boats everywhere, there's people everywhere, and the fishing's like a lot harder because of that. But coming somewhere like this, you look around and you see no one and nothing, and the fish just want to eat your lure because they don't really get to see that many lures. It really doesn't get any better, in my opinion. Oh, on me, oh, many, many, many. Come on. Oh, he's really big. Come on. Oh, got it. It's not a spangooly. I think it's a flowery, this one, or a good trout. There were so many fish there, man. The other one was trying to eat him. And so many spangled emperors as well. I call this a flowery cod. And they're like the the garbage disposal unit of the reef. And they're a pretty cool fish. I'll give you a look at him. He's in. Look at that. They get a lot bigger than this too, but pretty cool fish when there's 15 fish coming out at once, heckling your lure. Look down in there. Nailed it. Whenever I go fishing, apart from in here, there's always the thing I want to catch. It's always there and I always have the option there. I have my rod, my setup ready in case it happens. Um, is the, the GT. They're the best fish, in my opinion, to fish for full stop. The way they come up and everything goes from you're just watching your lure to absolute chaos in like half a second is like nothing else. They pull harder than anything else. And that idea of catching a really big one for me is the ultimate thing in fishing. That's what I've based my whole life around for the last like seven years is trying to catch a really big GT. A 50 kilo plus GT, that's what I want.
has an amazing bite oh, on the dart wing. Just winding it fast. What? He really just doesn't want to come up, does he? Oh. God, he fought hard. Oh, he's not bad. He's a proper little nugget. Shaking like crazy, man. Look at that rod tip. Really doesn't want much pressure. Oh, there we go. Now he does. Oh, man. It's a good fish, huh? Oh, yeah. Grab the Look at that. If I caught a 50 kilo GT, um, you'd like to go, oh, I'm done. But I, I wouldn't be done. What else do you do, man? You know? I'm not gonna go out there and just fish for Spanish or just fish for trout. I'm gonna go out there and cast for a GT. Simple.